So essentially this session is about if you want to constitute something Gurmat, if you want to say this is a Sikh opinion or this is what Guru wants us to do, how do you know that? In academics it's called epistemology, how do you know what you know? Just because you feel it or your Gyaniji told us or your Dadaji said that. If you say this is the Sikh opinion, how do you know? So that's what, I'm not here to give you guys any uh, answers on how to look at life. But today's session's goal is, can we come up with an approach so you can develop your own answers? Because I don't believe anyone should give us answers. It's between you and your guru, it's between you and your faith. But we need to have, we need to have some framework so we can develop our answers. And this is going to be about a framework. I'm not saying this is the only way to look at Gurmat, but this is a framework, a tool you can apply to come up with your own answers, which somehow uh, if the intersection of various ideas can be a sick opinion then. Yeah. So that's the, if you're here because of that purpose, then you might get something out of it. If you're expecting me to lecture about something else, then uh, you might be bored for, for a few minutes. Okay, let's uh, go on to the overview. And it's going to be a bit interactive. I'm gonna ask you guys several questions, but I'm gonna start out with an old Rabai. It's not actually that old, it's by one of the authors who just died two years ago. Uh, Rubai, if you are uh, wondering what Rubai, it's a Persian muse, it's a couplet or a share or something like that. Then I'll get into what Gurmat is, then we'll get into the foundational principles of Sikhi, and hopefully we can go toward a couple of conclusions there. So, but you have to draw your own conclusions. Can I get a volunteer to read this? Uh, somebody who can read Punjabi first? Anyone who can speak aloud? Okay. Yeah. मुह जोर समा ना कौमे मेट सकेगा तेनू अपनी पत पछाण लवे जे लड़ माही दा फड़ के so thank you, thanks to both of you. It, uh, this, is a, this is a good experimentation. When I asked for volunteers, somebody volunteered. Uh, he was struggling, but that's okay. This is how we learn. And then somebody helped out in his own capacity that this is how you read it properly. The idea is we should encourage people to read it even if they're not able to read it. And those who know it, they should maybe think about volunteering first as well while they're trying to help out. <coughs> so we gotta start balancing these things out. Why am I sharing this? Well. Somebody read the English one, aloud, please. Hanji. The nations insulted and humiliated are inhabiting a land at once isolated and treacherous. A poisonous earth, threatened by sudden erosions, spreads their unfortunate feet. I give you this assurance, O oh my nation, that this all-powerful time will not hurl you into perdition. If only you realize your extensional dignity and your heart doesn't lose the sacred sight of your prophet. Thank you. This is one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite books is called Sajay Rachyo Khalsa. It's quite literary Punjabi and the guy who wrote it is Harinder Singh Mahbub and this poem is written right in front of that poem, the first page. When I read it, you know, I never uh, studied Punjabi academically. I, you know, growing up in Kansas, I picked it up and it was, I, I sort, sort of figured out what this was saying. But I start seeing this guy, uh, Professor Render Singh Mahbub, he died two years. He actually he was a professor of English. And everything he has written is in Punjabi. So one of my meetings with him, I asked him, why does he write everything in Punjabi? He says, well, you know, you have to write in your mother tongue. If people think it's worthwhile, then somebody can go translate it. He knew English perfectly well. He was a professor of English. So I asked him, can you translate this in your own words for me? So this is his own translation. I didn't do this. The reason I like this is, you know, all of us are worried in our after dinner speeches at homes, in Gurdwaras, Panthada Ki Banu, what is happening to our children, and we keep talking about these issues. What's going on with the Sikh nation? Well, this sort of gives us a, one indication of what is going on. And he's essentially saying, don't worry about the time. Times are poisonous. Look at so many nations going through so many things in this world. But the issue is, when you are going through it, implying the Sikh community, that and we are going through this, 
the way to counter the trends, the way to counter the current trends, the negative trends is do you even know who you are? Do you know who you belong to? If you can figure that out by following your, actually, you know, keep it on transit from the block. Lard Mahi da Hodke. Mahi is a beloved in Punjabi poetry. It's not somebody you just respect, but somebody you are in love with. So it's saying, do you even love your prophet anymore? In this case, Guru. The idea is Guru. So he's saying, the, the root cause of our issues, Harinder Singh Mahabu is saying, the root cause of negativity around us these days is because we really don't love Guru. If we loved Guru, we would have figured out what to do. And this peoples and the nations and the times, none of this would matter. Now I'm going to relate this to Painadala's writing. He has a very similar Persian writing. And if loosely translated, it means you know, these days we are trying to decide who is a Sikh and who is not a Sikh, who has faith and who is faithless. He says, none is faithless if you have faith in yourself. But the times are such that every moment demands awareness. Issue is, do you have faith yourself while you are worried about other people's faith? And are you living in awareness? Because that's what's required. If you live in awareness, then you won't worry about what's happening. So let me start with that. And uh, I want to get into this idea about, this is a worldwide idea. How do you know something is great? I know six love to talk about that we are great, but I want to again get into the question is, how do you know something is great? Well, one of the principles is that the greatness lies when the visible social reality equals mm -hmm. abstract heights. What does that mean? In simple Punjabi, we say, Kani te kathani. Karani te kathani, sorry. The idea is what? Whatever you say you are, is that visible in the social reality? If it is visible in the social reality, then you are great. If you just talk about it, if you just declare those things, then you are not great. People can see through it. We call them hypocrites in a simple language. Or psychological term for that is cognitive dissonance. That you say one thing, but you do something else. In the words of Baba Faridji in Guru Granth Sahib, he calls it immature people. Jin manhor mukhor sakande kacheya. So he, we, our Sikhi principle is not that you are a bad person if you are not following through. It just means you are under development. It's work in progress. When we say something and when we do something else, it means you're just not there yet. And this principle, if you apply to anything in life, and by the way, kids are the best litmus test of that, when, especially when they are below the age of five. Because they're very carefree. The world hasn't conditioned them yet. And they'll tell you exactly who you are. Now apply this to Sikhi. You can apply this to anything in life. You can apply to other religions. Apply this to Sikhi. If you really feel your ideology is great, it better be visible in the adherence, which means Sikhs. But if it's not visible, the greatness is lost. In fact, you know, when I shared this, the book starts with this poem. And the Sajiro Chukhalsa book ends with this line in English. That's the only line in English in the whole book. He's quoting Shakespeare, and you guys should know him more than I do. He's your native son here. And he quotes Shakespeare, and it says, The crown has fallen. We must have sinned. So we are worried about whether the French, whether the Americans, whether the English, or whoever else, the Indians, value us or not. What about us? Do we value ourselves? And this is how he ends that book. The crown has fallen. We must have sinned. Are we looking at whether we are really into this? Is our social reality uh, equaling the ideas in Gurbani? If it's not, why would somebody come value you if you don't feel you yourself are valued? Or in other words of Gurbani, if you have not exploded your own divine potential, how are you expecting somebody else will recognize you? I am the part of divine, but do I know my worth? That's the question. If you really feel Sikhi feel is great, then it has to come out in the visible reality. There is no thermometer we have that this is a tit. They will say that you are 96% spiritual. There's no such thing. We like to think there are those things, so we come up with our own preferences to say, okay, she looks spiritual. But 
iron about him. That's what we do, right? There's no such thing in Sikhi. The behavior has to show whether you are Sikh or not, not just the physical outlook. And I'll get into that a little bit later. This is where the visible reality is in your behavior. The ideas are here, whether you know Sikhi or not. Okay, so with that, uh, actually, I wanted to ask you guys before I move on. When you hear the term Gurmat, what comes to your mind? Phrases, images, ideas, what comes to your mind? Haji. Yeah, but you know when somebody asks you for a meaning or idea, you can't use the same word to describe it. Gurmat is Guru Dimat, come on. Guru's message. Okay, so to you it means Guru's message. What else? True Eternal message. Wisdom. Haji? Eternal wisdom. Eternal wisdom? Uh, true message. True message. So uh, as if there are not true messages? No, no, good. I want you to think about these things. These, this needs to be defined. I mean, who is Guru and his mat are, I'm not saying his Anji. as, as such as a human being. Anji. But the one which comes with, which is eternal, happy, etc. <coughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> These are nice phrases and names of certain organizations as well. <laughs> what else? I want to change that question. I, you know, I personally am not into rhetoric at all. If you use the phrases which have been used so many years, they have no meaning for us anymore. I want you to tell me what you feel or think is Gurmat. Don't give me borrowed phrases. Personalize it. But Guru's Mat, the way you live, according Don't to Don't worry about how I live. I'm asking yeah, about what you think. That's what I meant. Uh, well, you didn't say that. <laughs> so let's learn to say that. It's important. Yeah, Don't yeah, mind sure. me because no, no, it's no, part no. of a workshop. You know, are there lawyers in this room? One. At least one? Pretend one. Any? A pretentious <laughs> one? Okay. <laughs> well, any lawyer will tell you semantics is what wins the case. Gurus are very careful what words they are using. We have to become careful about how we present things. Otherwise, we might know in our head what it means. But if you don't present it right, it becomes something else. Every word has its own connotation. So don't mind that, the, please. The wisdom that the gurus have given us in their actions, in their, what they've written, mm. and in, in the, I guess, the history that we know. Okay. So it's taking, taking stock of all that and using that to apply in your daily life the wisdom that they would have done mm. for us. So where you, where, where you may choose to act one way or the other way, you okay. may say, OK, acting in accordance with the Guru's wisdom would be the better option. Taking, okay. taking your sentence. Guru so Mat let one person at a time, Sorry. please. Yes. Would Guru Mat be something that connects you with your greatness, your vibration? How about speaking in first person again? Try speaking in first person, guys. It becomes harder then. When we speak in imperatives, <coughs> Gurbani is less than 2% imperatives. It okay. rarely says you should do this. Is it Just one second, one second. That's why it's a workshop. I want you to think about these things more. I did enough lecture yesterday, I'll do a little bit today too. But I really want you to think. Try speaking the same thing in first person. 95% of Gurbani is written in first person. How and ma is comes <coughs> over and over in Gurbani. They're talking about what they think, what Guru as an individual or a Pagat as an individual is feeling about the divine experience. Hanji. So when I am connected, mm -hmm. I am, and um, I'm connected with my Guru, I'm within When I'm, um, when, when the opposite is true, in order to understand Gurmat, I would, I would need to understand the opposite, which would, which, which would be the Manmat, which for me would be when I'm broken, when I'm dead. Okay. I'm so you introduce, I would pick up key phrases, mm -hmm. connection and lack of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you know, most of us, when we speak, we in fact sometimes start out with the sentence, I think. Right? Fill in the blanks. That's Manmat, by the way. Manmat says when you're using your own mind. It's very interesting, but that's what we do mostly. We might, I might look like that I am a Sikh, but if I keep using my mind, the physical outlook has no meaning there. Right? Because if you're still using your mind, you're supposed to use Guru's mind now. So think about this. That's a very powerful thing what you've just mentioned. That I, to me, you said Gurmat is connection connection with whatever it is, you know, we'll get into that. <laughs> and the lack of that connection is Manmat. Excellent. Hanji, to see kuch kehna chandhi? Hi, Guru Mahal. Hi, Guru Mahal. Hi, Guru Mahal. Hi, Guru Mahal. Hi, Guru
how do I behave in my everyday life, mm -hmm. keeping in mind what my guru wants me to do? Okay. What did you ask? How does Bhagavan want me to behave? So the, 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 the wisdom for you, the guru's wisdom becomes the behavior. Thank you. Well, there are two parallel ways in Guru uh, and Sab, one Manmat and Gurmat. Panji. And, uh, uh, and each Manmat has been described and overruled by the Gurmat itself within the Guru and Sab. Anything which uh, no, leaves so me... Just time out. No, no lectures. Sorry, don't mind that. No. I want your answer. Yeah. I don't want a construction which we might have learned. Yeah. Uh, anything which leads me uh, towards oh. the truth, towards okay. the God, towards the positive uh, attitude is okay. Gurmat for me. So, God, truth, positivity, power of now, whatever works for you. Okay? Anji. Guru, show you the mirror, where you are, where you want to become. So, you can dress yourself properly? <laughs> I'm just <laughs> no, that's what that. you know, uh, Professor Saab Singh. That's why you know it's, we have to look at how these you know they are they're thinkers. He didn't say this is translation. He said Guru Granth Darpan. I'm a mirror, a way to look at it. Itto maturity pata lagdiya bande di. Because some of us write a translation, we say this is it. The guy has done ten volumes and he's saying I'm just giving you one mirror. There's so many ways to look at it. Good. I like your analogy of mirror. Uh, how should I practice my religion? Okay, so today we might call that my value system. Okay, so Gurmat is sort of like how should I practice my value system? Excellent. Hanji. I don't know about we. To see our nature. Okay. So your surrounding, your nature, relationship with your surroundings. Okay. Hanji. So following on from what she said, um, the connection to God. Mm -hmm. But also knowing what the uh, how to establish that connection and knowing what the connection is. Okay. So, so again, this so the various dimensions the of connection. And then from there, following on to okay. the higher. Path. So one more, and then we'll move on. Panji. Uh, it's uh, um, a hypo a hypo hypothesis uh -huh. um, to experience joy for me. Okay. That sounds flowery. I don't know what that means, but it sounds good. <laughs> Ah, exactly. It's a, it's a theory. No, 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 I follow the, the follow meaning, okay. but, but I'm saying it's out there, but that's what works for you. And my whole point of this exercise was that there are maybe 60 of you sitting right now, and we heard from maybe 15 of you, and you got pretty good ideas here. It's combinations of these things. Some things are to be hypothesized, some things have to be connected, some have to be with nature, some have to be lived, some have to be mirrored. It's all those things. How can anyone say, if somebody says to me, I personally feel this, that somebody's going to come to me and say, exactly this is what Guru Mat is, I'd say, run away from that guy. <laughs> I mean, he's lying. Even Guru Sahib didn't himself write down that this is it, this is Guru Mat. I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm sharing some ideas of it. So Guru Mat is a collective understanding of these kinds of things. No one person can tell you exactly what it is. So this is why I say we need to develop approaches a hypothesis perhaps needs to be constructed. Good. So within that context, let me change and ask you, because this was a very abstract thing. Something which sounds good, right? Something which we should be doing. Generally, apa should work, we use the word. Let me change that a bit. If I ask you a question, tell me something about Guru Nanak in a concrete way, not abstract, like as if you're explaining to a kindergarten child. Very easily understandable nouns. Now somebody describe to me Guru Nanak here at that level. Because we need to really understand elementary stuff. Concrete level, how would you explain Guru Nanak? Because that's where Gurmat starts. Hanji. He's my best friend. That's how Guru Arjun describes him in Guru Granth Sahib. But you rarely hear that kind of elaborative katha. You'll get into Sakhis and you get lost. Guru Arjan Sahib exactly describes from that angle. He says, Mitar Pyara Nanak Ji Main Chhad Gawaya Rang Kusumbe Pulli That I had a great friend, he writes, but I've lost that friendship by getting caught up in the ways of the world. This is excellent because a child understands that. He's my friend. And yesterday or the other day we did a workshop on marriage and other relationships. That was the highest level of relationship. We have not presented Guru as a friend. We have presented Guru as an authority. 
ਵੀ ਹੈ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟਡ ਗੁਰੂ ਐਸ ਸਮਬਡੀ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਰੀਲੀ ਲੁੱਕ ਅਪ ਟੂ ਹੁਣ ਅੱਜ ਕੱਲ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖੋ ਗੁਰਗੰਧ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰਕਾਸ਼ ਉੱਚਾ ਹੀ ਹੋਈ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਹਰਮੰਦਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਉੱਚਾ ਸੀ ਸੋ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਬੀ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਕੰਪਨੀ ਨਾਉ ਵੀ ਪੁੱਟ ਪੀਪਲ ਐਂਡ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਔਨ ਪੈਡੈਸਟਲ ਵਿਚ ਬਿਕਮ ਅਨਅਪਰੋਚੇਬਲ ਫਰੈਂਡ ਇਜ਼ ਆਲਵੇਜ਼ ਅਪਰੋਚੇਬਲ ਥਿੰਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਥੀਸ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਗੁਰਮਤ ਇਜ਼ ਅਪਰੋਚੇਬਿਲਿਟੀ ਤੇ ਫਰੈਂਡਸ਼ਿਪ ਆਈਡੀਆ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਐਨੀਵਨ ਐਲਸ ਰੈਵੋਲੂਸ਼ਨਰੀ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਰੈਵੋਲੂਸ਼ਨਰੀ I agree but you think kindergartner understands that <laughs> honesty honesty okay haan ji guru nanak dev ji ne sach sat nu samjhaya aur parmatma di kya us sat ne tusi 4 saal de bachche nu dass rahe ho ji oh main nahi si pata ki ha because gurbani vich we are all really children we might have different ages but we don't have elementary understanding of life so we really need to come to very very basic nouns that's why i come back to nouns like friend is a noun so you say friend you don't have to explain right sanu eh basic cheeza ye guru ne dekhi aaj assi haan ji i would say that uh, nandi ji said that everybody was equal uh-huh. and that person who is um, in terms of what children that would explain to them that doesn't matter if you have loads of things they have no things they won't think for in, in the eyes of god yeah so this idea of equality we can play with everyone's equal in fact if we are not able to explain ekwanka from this angle we keep copying other religions apna bana liya there is one god koi kehanda there is but one god you know ehi chal rahe hai na gurdanak sahab have you noticed you know what is the equivalent word of god in gurbani that means the one which is beyond the atma tell me equivalent in gurbani of god no no that is an interpretation not the meaning ek no ek means one the word rab how many times the word rab comes in gurbani i want you guys to seriously think about these things because the way we are trained is very different how many times the word rab god comes in gurbani once but when we try to describe waheguru parmatma har we keep translating god 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 the whole you know judeo christian heritage and greek mythology guru nanak sahab could have written ek rab hai but he didn't it come once lekha rab mangesiya tu aho ke ra kam once in the whole guru granth sahab which means we better figure out what ek onkar is as soon as you say god you know jede their people of other beliefs who might not believe in god apo ona nu kadta guru nanak sahib is not using that word but we have chosen because convenient maybe we have not understood ek onkar i want you to think about that guru nanak sahib did not write ek rab hai there is one god that's become the regular translation now we'll come come to that but back to the children stuff it prompted me to you know say that because god has become the synonymous word right now and in gurbani it come once it comes once haji everything from the equality uh-huh. and the ek um, we have to share sure. whatever we've got we've got to share so that's the message yeah. so we could talk about the message from the ranik imam just now one shift now the the three golden rules as we have developed right yeah. let's talk about share part again remember the thing is social reality versus the abstract height right now this is what i learned too initially he sikhaya janda that you know e tin kam karo te share te bada time laya janda and what is the phrase original phrase ki hai guru punjabi ch naam japo na share wali one one chako now let's talk about this because i want to talk about basic things i think our reality is jinna chak sakde ho chak lo te je bach gaya ta wand do ਉਥੇ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਵੰਡ ਡਿਸਟ੍ਰਿਬਿਊਟ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਯੂ ਕੰਜ਼ਿਊਮ ਬਟ ਸੀ ਹਾਊ ਇਟਸ ਅਪਸਾਈਡ ਡਾਊਨ ਈਵਨ ਦ ਵੈਰੀ ਬੇਸਿਕ ਪ੍ਰਿੰਸੀਪਲ ਇਨ ਫੈਕਟ ਆਈ ਵਾਸ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਔਨ ਅ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟ ਇਨ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਸਮਵੇਅਰ ਐਂਡ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਦ ਗਾਇ ਹੀ ਵਾਸ ਅ ਯੂ نو ਮੋਰ ਡਿਵੈਲਪਡ ਇੰਡੀਵਿਜੂਅਲ ਸਿਕ ਮੈਨ ਐਂਡ ਹੀ ਸੈਡ ਟੂ ਮੀ ਵਾਂਸ ਹੀ ਸੈਸ ਯੂ نو ਜੀ ਦ ਲੋਸ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੇਕਨ ਅੰਬਰਤ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਡੋਨਟ ਟੇਕ ਆਊਟ ਦਸ ਵਨ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਸਟੀਲਿੰਗ ਫਰਮ ਦ ਗੁਰੂ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਦੈਟਸ ਟਰੂ other people are required to but you have given a commitment to minimum give 10% before you start consuming one chakna is that but we have made it lopsided again upside down we say ki jinna chak sakde ho chak lo je kuch bach gaya fir daan de dange 
this is how bad it is. See the basic principles? You don't have to know philosophical tendencies here, but we change even the basic idea. Not just change it, we kick it upside down. Okay, <laughs> thanks for sharing. I just want to talk about basic things, that's why. So Gurma doesn't have to be that somebody PhD has to come and explain to you or something. I was like, 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 Think about social reality. Teacher, right? Kid understands it. They love to, you know, teachers not being able to be those right? Friendship idea. But teacher is there to teach. You go there to learn. Am I going to Guru to learn? Very basic questions. Or am I asking them to show me magic? I think you need to go to a magician then. Don't go to the Guru. Guru is there to teach you. Jin manaste devte kiye karatna lagi var. Guru is there to transform us at every level. From an average person to an angel-like behavior. Good. I'm going to share one idea here. And we call that the sun and the lion. The reason we all follow Guru Nanak, this is the starting of Sikhi. Because we actually don't see a difference between what he said and what he practiced. And no conflicts to him. He's clear about what to do. People might not like what he's doing. His, some of his teachers didn't like what he was doing. His dad didn't like what he was doing. Sometimes uh, the, the head of the state didn't like what he was doing. But he was clear about what needs to be done. That's Guru. When you have the wisdom, and by the way, this is the basic difference between wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom is practice of knowledge. We all have, we have tough time practicing it. So we are not wise, we might have information. But Ajikal, just information is not a big thing. You can Google anything, so what if you have information? The idea is, what are you doing with that information? I mean, why do you want to be just encyclopedia? I mean, it's good if you know it, but you can always look up. More important is, what are you doing with the information you have? And this is the image we like to present of Guru Nanak Sahib. It might even, I mean, not image as this image, but Pai Gurdas has used the word, the sun and the lion, to describe Guru Nanak. I know we are not used to that, but we sing this Shabad every time Guru Nanak Sahib Gurpur comes. But I don't think we are thinking about it. What is sun? Tell me qualities of the sun. Roshni Deni. And Roshni is light. Light is symbolic of what? Knowledge. Knowledge, wisdom, same idea. Yeah. Gyan. But do we look at Guru as the sun? Gyan land jande hai? Again, you know, look at, this is Pai Gurdas. He says, Jyokar Suraj Nikkalaya. Is anything possible in the world without sun? Energy. 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 Yes, it is energy as well. Is anything possible in the world without sun? No. no. If somebody says they're telling you Sikhi, make sure they cite Guru Nanak. If they're citing someone else, it's just not possible to be Sikhi. It has to start from Guru Nanak. Because they're like, there's even, not, no life is possible without sun, no Sikhi is possible without Guru Nanak. He is the originator of Sikhi. Which means, what he wrote in Gurbani, and how he lived, becomes a litmus test. I mean, Sikhi, there might be other people who are great, but they are not the sun. For Sikhs, he is the sun. The Gurus become the sun. Hanji. You just said, because you just said it, you said with, for six he, for six he's a son, but son is without prejudice. Yeah. So it's, so. That's yeah, there are so many qualities. So I just brought it down to, you can talk about all the qualities, but the very basic becomes nothing is possible without sun. Even the moon gets its light from sun. You know that. If you don't, you can Google that. <laughs> so in Sikhi, nothing is possible without Guru Nanak, because he becomes the originator of the idea of Sikhi, right? So if you are going to say this is a Sikh opinion, you better find something in his life or something in his barney which supports your idea. Otherwise, it's your opinion. And opinions are dime a dozen these days. In fact, they're even cheaper than that sometimes. <laughs> what constitutes your opinion is what matters. So if you say this is Sikhi, it has to start with him. Second thing, do you look at Guru Nanak as the lion? What images do we have? Which guru we think of as a lion? You know, the tenth and sometimes maybe the sixth. Pai Gurdas says, no, Guru Nanak is the lion. Because see, what we have done is we have developed our favorite gurus. 
थ्री एच ओ लव गुरु रामदास साहब मोर दिल्ली सिक्स लव गुरु हरकृष्ण साहब मोर दोज हु ओनली वॉन्ट टू डू नाम सिमरन दिल से लेट्स फॉलो गुरु नानक ओनली दोज हु वॉन्ट टू फाइट दैट्स हाउ आर गुरु गोविंद सिंह वी आर डिवेलप फेवरेट गुरुज एंड दिस इज अ मेजर प्रॉब्लम इन सिक्की नाउ Actually, every guru is same. This is why every guru becomes a son, and I'll come to that and the lion. But we don't look at Guru Nanak as a lion, do we? Because he was fearless. But we don't say that. We don't think he's a lion. Pai Guru Das does. This is why Pai Guru Das is so important. He's in the same shabad. He says, "Singa ke mirgavli." We sing it. <coughs> Sing is a lion. He says he roared like a lion. and the jungle the jungle is the word you know he's using an analogy like a lion roars roars in the jungle so did guru nanak and the small deers ran away deer refers to the smaller thoughts he says the lifestyles which guru nanak confronted they all ran away from him when he roared like a lion so pai guru das says guru nanak is the lion every guru is the son and the lion that's why because they are the that's why we call them the ten nanaks my point is we don't look at guru nanak as a lion we don't teach our children that he is a lion somehow we make it as a transformatory thing this is why 95% of the books you'll pick up in the market on sikhi they'll tell you first five were pacifist and next five became militant that's not the sikh thesis that's the thesis of those who don't like us they want us to separate the gurus and we have done it like we have effectively done it favorite gurus bana le apne apne that's the lack of understanding what guru is in gurbani and according to sikh theologians like pai gurdas So, let's move on to this. Uh, this is a symbolism, an idea. Just keep in mind, we are developing our own symbolisms. This is Pai Gurdas's to present Guru Nanak. It's very important to understand that somebody who lived in the company of six gurus, somebody, sorry, in the company of four gurus, and wrote about six gurus. I think I need to give that much more weight. This is what we call first-hand information, rather than somebody who wrote a book like me or an essay in the last two years. It might be great essay. but doesn't mean it is accurate from a sick angle because some of the things sound good these days doesn't mean they are good yeah so my question to all of you and i want to hear from you now is if guru, if in guru nanak's life we don't see conflicts how can we go to that level because what he says abstract height the idea matches the practice oh i just think in a article likha ji piche jo dr ajay singh and he said among six these days there is a yawning gap between precept and practice yawning gap matlab nee naal lag jandi hai na zabardast gap hai kinniya galla sunaiye and you know all those so i'm not going to get into that we know the all the issues question is how do we counter those how do we counter this gap what do you guys think haan ji not living in accordance with those with those precepts simple questions have simple answers but very hard to practice <laughs> the idea actually comes down to living it practicing it work, hanji work on yourself actually uh, again if we go by gurbani's thesis or sardar jagjit singh who wrote about what's the purpose of sikh revolution he says the way gurus tackled this issue of gap was by the gurus approach was bottom up work facilitate create an environment where every individual changes their own behavior You're right. To start It's, from your own home. If you can, go ahead. <laughs> Let's well, move on. How well, about starting from your own self? I mean, you yeah, only yourself. Uh, realizing the God within you uh, yeah. in it as a first step. We'll talk about God a little bit more, but whatever the general idea of God is, yes. Yeah. So basically, this is a question you guys need to constantly think about. How do I bridge the gap between the idea of Sikhi? and the practice of sikhi and it's a lifelong process obviously somebody might be able to do it at age of 5 for others it might be age of in 70s that's sikh history so don't be in a hurry don't worry about what other person why is it taking him so long that's guru amar das pasha in 70s right and we have everything in between don't worry about other person's laundry it's all about when are you going to wash your own laundry we very way too much about other people's laundry right okay you to think about this question and then tell me what you what's your response what does guru mean to you don't give me constructed response i'm not looking for philosophical answer here 
what does guru mean to you take 30 seconds think about it usually i have people write it down because when you write it crystallizes your thoughts really think about it what does guru mean to you i'm not asking you the literal meaning i'm not asking you a line from gurbani <coughs> what does the guru mean to you take some more time and i want to hear from those who haven't said anything yet let's have some collective understanding okay the guru has answers for me hanji guidance what else hanji for me guru is a source of all light all energy all uh, universal uh, wisdom take the source Hopefully you the can source that to course. lead to Almighty God. Anji? Source to lead to Almighty God. God. Source can in there. You know, I don't want to use the rhetoric phrases. I want to just come with your answer. Anji? I don't know live on a higher plane. Okay. Anji? Yes? Savior. Yeah? Savior. Savior. Yeah. Okay. We can, uh, it's, it's little, we'll live with it for now. Support and comfort. Support and comfort? How about discomfort? <laughs> I think a lot of sun Babas give you a lot of comfort these days. Guru, if you go to, they will make you very uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> Mentally speaking. Yes, it is. So the way it's presented in the tradition is comfort for those who are uncomfortable and the ones who are too comfortable making them uncomfortable. Because it's about developing. Remember, Guru is a teacher. Anji. Anji? Transformer. Transformer. What kind? I grew up with different transformers. <laughs> From, um... No, 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 I was just joking. Yeah, the one who transforms you, changes you. Anji? Inspiration. Inspiration. This is the one which is lacking the most these days. I don't see Guru Nanak Sahib going to average people and giving them lectures in any of the Sakthis. The ones who liked what he was doing, they came to listen to him, right? But we are telling the whole world to practice Sikhi. Ajvi Sivirima, generally I turn, you know, there's a TV on at the house where I'm staying, so I'm looking at each other. Oh, Ajvi, oh, Pai Sabi, the Sri Janaki, Kinde, Bandiane, Sade Papaji, Nabra Chakaya. Oh my God. I guess by that measure, Guru Arjan Sahab, Pai Kuch Hor Pad Janke, because he was telling Pai Manj to go home. Our criteria have totally changed. I think it's everything around you because everything teaches you something or another. Okay. So it's a universal teacher. So I, so I, I know this universal word is used these days quite a bit, but whatever that generally means, we'll stick well, to it. Everything around Everything you. around you. Uh, so let's move on. Last one. To make you from inner poor to rich, to become your heart rich of knowledge. Oh, rich of knowledge, okay. Just knowledge? No. To every way from inside <laughs> you can make you. So strong. basically, bringing out. The, your potentials. Now, let, I'm just going to focus on this one line. Uh, there are several lines because I think this element of Guru we are generally missing. And some of you covered it. Ithi dasya tan tan guru gur sat gur padha jin har updes de kiye syane. How many of us think that I am going to take instructions from the Guru to become enlightened? I rarely hear that Ardas in the Gurdwaras. It's basically us, right? Our reality is something else. Gurbani, which is Upadesh, the instructions in life. Everyone's telling us what to do because it's easy to tell us what to do. But he says, really, if you are ready for instructions, then go to the Guru. Guru will make you Syana. Everyone else got other agendas. I have another agenda, other people have other agendas. Only the Guru has the agenda to enlighten you. <coughs> no other agendas the Guru has. So keep that issue of Guru in mind, that, that role of Guru in mind. So you guys already said Gurumat is Guru's wisdom, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But question A, who's going to decide what's Guru's wisdom? Because I don't know Gurmani, right? That's a reality. So everyone, few experts are popping up. Should I go to AKJ? Should I go to Taksal? Should I go to 3HO? Should I go to missionaries? Should I go to institute? What Punjabi kehne vyapari karan ho gaya aur ab da. 
people are selling these things and we are desperate so they prey on us syane banan da agenda ta bahut katha hai kuch aur banai ja rahe ne so think about all these i'm not putting any of those organizations i include my own in there the idea is do what are they really after who decides what's goes uh, guru's wisdom because two diametrically opposing views both are saying they are gurmat ek ke na meat kha sakde ho ke nahi kha sakde dono ke na gurmat ha let's take look at practical example thing jinni jinni wait 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 sorry <laughs> i want to talk about real things jithe gurmat tonu apply karni paani hai if you talk about abstract things everyone will agree is there do you see too many disagreements on how to practice kirt karo rarely koi aao nahi to aao hi nahi because wo to abstract gal hai na karni kive hai should we be investing in tobacco stocks utthe disagreement khada ho jao ke nahi bande ne gas station ne real things concrete ideas the visible reality is in the concrete ideas in abstraction everyone's great think about these things so before you go to ki han ji gurbani che likha we know everyone agrees what's written in gurbani but how are you going to interpret it who decides that again some people feel and some are made to feel that they can they can't have guru's wisdom unless they do a b c is it really exclusive i thought that was semantic tradition where they say you have to be like us to get to god i don't think in gurbani anywhere it says you have to be like us to get to god think about these things because they chalriya sade dharm vich bhi bahut aaj kal they say our kind of amrit will get you there even people are taking double triple amrits badi ajeeb ji galla chal rahi hain but that's the social reality remember the first thing i shared where the social reality has to match the wisdom the idea how do i understand guru's wisdom this is a very pertinent question lot of people ask this mainu gurbani ni samajh aani then what do i do well if you don't understand investment banking what do you do huh that's one thing people do some go to school to become expert but you do something you don't just sit every day and say oh man i wish i can understand gurbani you cannot be you know yesterday they were talking about some score of 8 to 2 i guess some someone embarrassingly lost a big time but if somebody wants to be a good soccer player and they just get up every morning will they pick and think that i need to be a good soccer player they'll never be a football player whatever you call it here the point is this is what we do i wish i can be like the guru but you have to actually go do something just like anything else in life so ethe main hun approach di gal kar rahe ha then we'll be get into question and answer first thing i'm just going to put everything here is if you really want to have guru's wisdom in your life the number one thing to do is bring bani into your life it's as simple as that because everything else is debatable in six, among six this is the one unification point what's in guru granth sahib and guru granth sahib no asi samjha nahi changa tarike naal we really have to spend lot of time understanding guru granth sahib we want to know where does it say in guru granth sahib you, you need to keep hair or take amrit these kind of questions right we want to reduce guru granth sahib to a law book because we are used to that in other religions it is a law book <laughs> in sikhi it is not a law book it's an infinite prayer for our laws we have sikh rahat maryada don't treat gurbani as a law book gurbani is about what people are saying universal universal cultures guru granth sahib is not just for sikhs only i know we think it is for sikhs it is guru because we have accepted it as guru well at least in declaration not in practice but at least declarations of gita na for others it might be just the granth but for us it has become guru granth sahib guru granth sahib we have to spend time with it you got to learn the vocabulary the nouns the verbs you learn the alphabets you use references when something is very hard you figure out someone else to teach you some parts of it and and at the end of the day you got to work on figuring out a relationship with the shabad If you don't do that there are enough people out there they'll take incredible advantage of you and pretty much according to gurbani all religious and political leaders are corrupt kale de bare pura lecture hi eta si ga ki kive corrupt ne ho this is why a new script is invented so all of you have access yes a phonetic script phonetic script means it's for commoner we are today debating how to pronounce it how to you know 
if it is it written for scholars if it was for scholars then you need sanskritized elements of you know how to figure out how to read this language if it's not for scholars if it's for everyday people which is what six say well the least discretionary way of teaching something is read the way it's written everything else is discretion and why does it really matter exactly how you need to have it you need to learn it as you learn more you will figure out different dimensions of it first point is if somebody says they want to know what gurmat is guru's wisdom is they got to go to guru granth sahib no other option first option is this and one of the reasons it's great is it is free of mythology yes it has references of mythological figures but only in terms of behavior somebody talked about earlier the guru is here to change your behavior transform so mythological figures are mentioned as a reference in terms of their behavior they are never endorsed or condemned as entity because people are you like today if i give an example if i talk to you about rupert murdoch i'm going to talk about certain behaviors because you know rupert murdoch how corrupt he is <laughs> well anyway some of you might want to debate if you work for sky news or something but the point is if i say his name then i'm not saying whether he existed or not i'm just saying he look what his practice is brought down including some of the commissioners had to resign the level of corruption he brought in <laughs> right so it's about the behavior don't think it is endorsement of people who existed or didn't exist guru granth sahib shabad eternal guru all these words you have heard but i want to ask you just one word can somebody tell me what granth means religious book any other guesses ha ji compilation compilation literal meaning of the word granth is compilation anthology collected works if you just understand that part you will start appreciating guru granth sahib from multiple dimensions it has six gurus bani 15 pagats of various backgrounds baba <coughs> at least 10 bards three six 500 years of different languages different regions different backgrounds different professional background there's a brahman in there there's a jat in there and there's a butcher in there i don't think we try to understand what's happening in gurugram sir it is demolishing all sorts of nonsensical discussions we have today it's only 30% punjabi rest is prakrit and abhranch and sad pasha and hybridized persian it's demolishing you don't have to be just punjabi to know it If, if Guru Granth Sahib was all Punjabi, every Punjabi would have understood Guru Granth Sahib, but they don't. It's a simple fact. So the Granth part we actually don't appreciate at all. It is incredible resource for the world literature, for world languages, for aesthetics of different kinds. Five hundred years of specimens of different languages. Even when people are studying Pagadra Vidas Ji, they go look at other things, but eventually people like William Callaward. they come back to guru granth sahib they say this is the only authentic source on pai ravdas or pagat ravdas they sometimes call him rai das my point is guru arjan sahib ne ek khazana ditta sanu he uses that word in guru granth sahib and he says pyo dade da khol ditta khazana khazana is your asset he said this is the biggest asset i have and i leave it to you how are we taking care of this asset if this is the asset we don't even understand various dimensions and to make it a guru is a next level if you just say i'll follow you it became a guru five generations later so there was a training to understand what is it's it will remain a granth it will remain a religious book as some of us call it as well there's nothing wrong with it but in order for us to become a guru granth sahib and by the way what does sahib mean we use this i mean some people put shri in front and ji at the end but minimum we say this much right what does sahib mean master master let's try a little bit more more accurate meaning master is part of it what else is a sahib aajkal assi sare nu hi bhai sahib banata na ta main keh rahe hu sovereign sovereign sahib is the one you take orders from <laughs> but we are taking orders from all sorts of people these days sahib we you don't know who your master is so guru granth sahib is the number one place if you don't know how to read it pick up guru nanak glossary by christopher shackel and start developing vocabulary learn the alphabets uh, yesterday i gave an example of jassa singh allu waliya did not know punjabi or gurmukhi his mother brought him to nawab kapoor singh to learn 
and he eventually became the uncontested leader of the Sikhs. That's their history. Okay, so number one point of Gurmat is Gurbani. What's written in Guru Granth Sahib? Make sure you develop some relationship with it. Okay? Second reference point is Tawarik. Generally called history. Itihas Aam Tawar Te Kehane. But Sikh traditions uses the word Tawarik. Now the question is, which story can we tell? That's what we are stuck, right? In, on stages you've heard all sorts of stories. There's so many books. People have made gurus to be all sorts of personalities. People are questioning certain things about the gurus as well. So which story? How do you decide which story to tell? Which narrative to tell? Which sakhi to tell? That's, a, that's the fundamental question these days. Because you hear so many things. In fact, let me bring in something a little bit unorthodox here. Uh, one of the classes I took in college was uh, uh, Real American Hero. I did aerospace engineering, but I did a lot of these other class of cl kinds of classes. And I remember walking into that class, and Dr. Thomas said, this class is about detecting bullshit. <coughs> I'm like, what is this guy saying? He's like, yep. He says, I don't give A, B, C, D, or F grades. I only give passing and failing grade. And the way I will decide this is at the end of the semesters, if you have your bullshit detectors on. Now, I know it sounds a little funny. Now, apply it today. There's so much you're hearing. Do we have a detect? Like, it's like emails I said the other day. There's so many emails which come in. We, big, we develop filters. Here is a junk mail. Here is a mass email. And he's a, here are the people I don't want to hear from, so you block them. Well, why are we not doing this with Gurmat? Or were people who say they're saying Gurmat? There's so much noise. How about developing filters? Because if you allow everything to come in, uh, it, you're gonna, it, you know, you can't, it just doesn't work. It's unoperational. Junk mail, in fact, you will notice. That's why you have to get even Trend Micro or some other service. So you really have to develop an internal coping mechanism that how do I deal with this junk? So which narrative do we tell? How do I figure out which Saki is worth telling? And even according to the concept of Guru Granth Sahib. So one is you measure it against the litmus test in Guru Granth Sahib. Yep, that's there. What else? Your progeny. Put suput karen, which means jada dasreya, they better do their work. It's your responsibility if you're sharing a sakhi. Does this sakhi have the capacity to transform? Otherwise, it's just a story, right? Story the kiya. ਮੈਂ 1600s they were jodhiyan jaake this is what our katha vachaks are doing and we are sitting there in sharda hanji hanji bada anand aaya hor batue khol ke paise do because that's what they're saying they're playing with your emotions i mean that's what's going on let's let's call spade a spade pretty much everything you hear these days is to make you so emotional emotions are a good thing but it cannot just be emotional it has to make sense every sakhi i know of guru nanak sahab the basic thing he comes down to is whether it is a Pani Wali, whether it is a Jagannath Puri Wali, he's basically saying, does this make sense? Think about it. But our Katha Vajaks are messing it up. So the litmus test in Gurbani is that history, that narrative, put saput karen, ek bache no bohat vadiya bache yada banada ve, oh sakhi dasa. Sari sakhi ani, sari raas appa karde hai gurdwari hai vich, samapti to pehla, do we talk about every Sikh? We talk about those who did it. So we cannot tell every Sakhi. We don't know which one's true or not. We need to just think about, does this have the capacity to transform? So Itihas is karke Guru Sahib da important hega. In fact, the only thing I want to mention here is, most of us only talk about spiritual element of the Gurus. I don't even want to talk about that. That all of you know. What about their other leadership, their political, social, and their economic leadership? Gurus are building cities. We can't even build a good family. You know how much planning it takes to build a city? They were incredible planners. Why don't we present them as such? 
They were incredible political leaders. They're jailed for their beliefs. They're political assassination attempts for their beliefs. They're martyrdoms for their beliefs. Why don't we learn politics from them? Why do we have to only learn from sad, bad, and mad? The three Akali Dal six have. <laughs> if that's the acronym, where will we get, right? So the politics also we have to learn from the guru. <laughs> and then the, uh, the, the social elements are, we don't look at gurus and their relationship with their wives, their sisters, their brothers. They're dealing with realities of life too. But we don't look at it from that angle. Why don't we ask this question? How did Guru Nanak Sahib deal with his wife? <coughs> what was their relationship? How did Guru Amar Das and his wife decide on the matter of their daughter? Uh, daughter? How did Guru Arjan deal with his brother who was trying to poison his son? How did Guru Harkar Rai deal with the assassin of his father when his son needed help? Very tough questions of life, but Guru's dealt with all of these. So look at history as a lesson from how Guru's dealt with issues. We are not doing that. That constitutes part of Gurmat. And the third element of Gurmat is Rehat. And I know Rehat generally, people think it's Sikh Rehat Maryada. Rehat means lifestyle. Sikh Rehat Maryada is one part of it. People who only follow the law, they become fanatic. We have to follow the law and the spirit. When you do that, then you have a lifestyle. And I'll put a few things here you can listen and then we'll go to some question answers soon. Basically, lifestyle has to reflect what gurus have done and what's in Gurbani. Lifestyle is where you deal with tough things, the conflicts of life. Should I support the war in Iraq or not? We should be able to answer that. That's a lifestyle issue, right? Should I, who should I vote for in SGPC election or should I refrain? Why are we not asking these questions? That's the light, that's a rahat issue. And Guru Gobind Singh has said it very clearly. He says, I don't care if you think you are a Sikh or not, because all of us think we are great Sikhs. He says, Rahat pyari mujko, Sikh pyara na hai. He says, I'm interested in your lifestyle. And generally we don't say Rahat is a lifestyle, we just make it just the law. That's Sikh Rahat Maryada. Those are our codifications. We have to interpret those for our lifestyle. How, how do you talk to your wife? is a lifestyle issue. So many Panthic people don't even know how to talk to their spouses. So I wonder, man, what are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, that's the reality, right? I'm going to come back to the first thing. Social reality has to match the idea, the abstract height. <coughs> how do you deal with other people, of other Sikhs who don't like the Sikhi, your Sikhi, your way of practicing Sikhi? How should we deal with them? We now make them as if they're not even Sikhs. I remember 30 years ago, looking at when a great Taksali guy will meet a great AKJ guy, they didn't think first thing as being a hate. It was actually respect. It has something has gone really bad in the last 25 years. They actually respected each other's traditions. Now, first thing we see is, oh man, I know that guy. <coughs> and we all do that, it's not just them. I look at you and I'm thinking, I know who you are. Something has gone bad in lifestyle. So. My point here is, let me come to this quick thing, that basically in Sikhi, if you're trying to come up with what is a Gurmat, at minimum, one approach I'm uh, sharing is, at minimum, where you take Gurbani, you look at an episode from the life of the Guru, and you make it relevant to you, that's Gurmat. Where all three have to intersect. If it's just Gurbani, we will reduce it to philosophy. In fact, a lot of Sikhs are saying this now. Gurbani Diji, Badi Jabardas philosophy here. You know, philosophy is a small thing. In fact, you know, Iqbal has written a poem. He says, when Buddhism came to India, the, the Indians, the Brahmans did not accept it. Why? Because Brahmans were too proud of their philosophy. Khayale falsafe par nasta. We are not philosophy, we are reality. Even Khalil Gibran has put philosopher in its own place, if you read the prophet. He says, philosopher is a good guy, but in front of a prophet, he's nothing because philosopher just philosophizes. He wishes how this is how world should be, doesn't mean he or she is working on it, making it a re true reality. Whereas guru or the prophet or other people of that nature, they actually confront the reality to change the realities they live in. So, and by the way, I put this Shabad here. 
The reality is where the shahar you live, the city you live in, becomes a city without sorrow. That's our vision. Begam pura. In, in, the, in the Punjabi colloquials, you know, Begam is a wife, so the idea used to be she's supposed to take your worries away. <laughs> but today's spouses are, you know, maybe creating more worries, that's why we have higher divorce rates. But it's not just that Begam is worrylessness. Pura is like the idea of will. The city you live in needs to be city without sorrow. So that's what our lifestyle needs to be. And one of the qualifications of that city is, in that Shabbat, it says, wherever you have second or third class citizens, there will never be stability. In your home, if somebody feels they're not being treated equally, somebody said equality is one way to present it. In your community, if somebody feels they're not being treated equally. In your country, if somebody feels they're not being treated equally, there is no political stability. Kayam dayam sada patshahi. If the same Shabbat says, the stability remains when dom na same, when there is no second or third level of citizenship. So this needs to be part of our lifestyle, where nobody feels that they're not being treated fairly, justly, and with respect. The dignity of human being needs to come out, out of gurma. So gurbani by itself will become philosophy. You look in the life of the gurus, they, whatever they said, they did it, right? So that's why it's more than philosophy. It's not just a philosophy. In fact, it's uh, in the same poem Iqbal has written that the reason Guru Nanak is great. So basically, Iqbal is accepting the only thing which has really truly worked in India is Guru Nanak. He says, Fir uthi tawheed ki Punjab se, Hind ko marde kamil ne jagaya khwab se. That the India was daydreaming. They were too proud of their philosophy. And an unparalleled man came, and in Islam, unparalleled man is reserved for Prophet Muhammad. But Iqbal is using this phrase for Guru Nanak. He said, an unparalleled man came in India, and he shook people away from their wishful thinking. Daydreaming is wishful thinking. I wish this could be done. He says, no, he showed them how it is done. So this is Kurma, where you shook things up, and you will be controversial, by the way. Ajikal Mahidevi Galkarna, then we'll go to Q&A. A lot of people worry about controversies. It's like that, you know, old Punjabi saying, ki harma kendi hai, Bhagat Singh or on, par saate karna on. Yehi chal raha na? You know, Guru Nanak was very controversial from very day one. Imagine you have a great party at your home, and your dad comes to you, says, this is what we're gonna do today. You have all your friends and relatives, and your son today says, no, I don't want to do this, dad. It creates a lot of uncomfortableness. That's exactly what he did. The day he is getting married, people want to kill him by throwing a whole wall on him. They hated him that much? Gurdwara Kachi Kanan Bhatala. Look at his life. This is his history. But he's focused. He's like, let me keep doing what I feel is the right thing to do. So controversy just means there are people, there are forces, negative forces which want to maintain status quo. That's what controversy means. It is always hard. It's always hard on the family and the individual. But if you're trying to avoid controversy, you're basically saying, let's maintain status quo. And the whole Sikh history of the gurus is countering the status quo, changing it. This is why somebody said it was revolution. Exactly, it was a revolution. So basically, when all three things come together, your lifestyle matches what gurus did, and it, it has a support out of Gurbani, that is possibly Gurmat because we're still using our mind to interpret it. Anything less than that, it's just an opinion. Doesn't mean it's sikhi. And yeah, there's so many opinions these days. I'm giving you one as well, but I'm saying, instead of asking me some direct questions, ki eda ki kariye, eda ki kariye, here is an approach to come up with your own answer. Find a relevant answer in Gurbani, see how gurus dealt with it, and make it relevant to your life in 2011. Okay? And can I get somebody to read this? A volunteer? Sikhi does not outrightly reject or oppose other doctrines or dogmas, but demands true dialogue rather than conversation as conversion, the, conversion as the goal uh, transcending particular is of other religious. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm. Sorry, what happened here? <laughs> the slide was drinking water. <laughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> it holds 
that in depth of every region, living region, there is a point at which a region loses its importance and that to which point it breaks through is particularly uh, elevating it to a spiritual freedom, Sardar Kapoor Singh. Uh, I want to focus on two things here. Sardar Kapoor Singh is one of the leading theologians of last century among the Sikhs. First thing I want to focus on is, this has happened to Sikhs today, but he is saying Sikhi opposed this. He said Sikhi was about true dialogue rather than conversion. Now Sikha no bhi pata ki Lord paye sare convert kan chalagya hoi We all have this need. Even if not at a religious level, at a mental level, we want everyone to think like the way I think. Right? We all do this in our everyday life. Ki mere mangu socho. And we are trying to convince people to do that. And he is saying Guru Nanak's approach was, let's talk about it. He never said, follow me and I shall show you the way. He says, let's talk about it. Here is my take, share your take. And he left, and in fact, he did a whole Barney called Sid Ghost, that's why. Where people, the leading yogic leaders at the time were telling him what to do, and they actually belittled him, if you read the Barney carefully. And he's like, that's okay. And let, let me share what I think about all this. So the point is, we don't have dialogues on Sikhi anymore. It's all become more about my way or highway type idea. And the other thing is, he says the living religion is the one which is fighting degeneration. Today, we are not talking about Sikhi, we are not living Sikhi, so it is degenerating. So we keep talking about how great the Sikhs were, right? 100 years ago, how they got the Gurdwaras back from the Mahans and the British government. And 200 years ago, how Ahmed Shah Abdali attacked, you know, yes, yes. they defended Darbar Sahib. But we are too afraid to say, they did this 27 years ago too. We get very uncomfortable, very scared to say that. Right? Same thing. We have no issue with Baba Deep Singh. He has I even mean, become the badass of the week on one of the websites. non six are looking at it. There's a website called Badass of the Week. And they have shown Mai Pago and Baba Deep Singh two different times. Six don't even know this. They have presented that these were the, you know, the real heroes in the world. But if we say somebody like that, 27 years ago did that, we're like, uh, I don't know, he's controversial. You bet he's controversial. Guru Nanak was very controversial. So degeneration is coming in because we are not thinking about things. We have gotten in part of the ism, somebody was saying earlier. Exactly, there is no such thing called Sikhism. It should be Sikhi. These isms create, ism basically means there is no unification of doctrine. So the Western methodology, I could religion, study of religion approach developed 100 years ago said, anything where we think there is no singularity of doctrine, let's just call them isms. It's basically a creative way of putting us down. So everything became Hinduism, Jainism, Shintoism. Judaism, they do say that, but because in, in original Judaism there was no singular doctrine, they figured it out how to make it singular eventually. But in Sikhi there is, and our word is Sikhi. We should be saying Sikhi. Because in Maj Kiwar it says, Guru Samund Nadi Sab Sikhi. So we should say we follow Sikhi and we are Sikhs. We are not isms. Isms have, isms basically means you can do whatever you want and still be religious. It's today's term for that is spiritualism. Everyone wants to be spiritual these days, right? Because there's no accountability. <laughs> you can do anything and just say, I'm spiritual. But that's not the topic today. We'll come to that some other day. Okay. Now, you guys all know what this is. What is this? Mool Mantra. Mool Mantra? Somebody tell me what Mool means. Root. And root is? Root, yeah. Which root? Root ki hindi hai? Bee jad. What else? Nichod. Let me introduce something Sekha, else here. Sekha, Sekha, that is the result. Core. Well, I don't know about the result, but it's the beginning for core. sure. Core. Mud, the core, the beginning. Foundation. The foundation. If I ask you, tell me what does the word radical mean? Extremist. Huh? Extremist. Extremist. <coughs> Anyone else? Away <coughs> from current thinking. Away from current thinking. Anyone else? I want you to go look it up in a dictionary. Radical means root-oriented. 
people who want to solve issues at the root level. This is why when writers sometimes say gurus were radicals, you better believe they were. Radical means root oriented. They are not here to fix, they're here to solve problems. There's a difference between two things. That's why they're revolutionary. Their, uh, their approach is whatever people are doing is fine, but we're gonna do it this way. And whoever wants to, here is another option. So I want to, I know that the connotation of the words changes, but I want you to know what these words mean because the media keeps playing with these words. Radical means root oriented, those who want to strike at the root level. So root you know is mool. What is mantar? I am going to discuss mantar. What is mantar? Mantar means the one who is formula. In the Indic tradition, what's mantar? That's where it's coming from, right? In Indian tradition, South Asian tradition, what's mantar? Something you repeat for a particular end. So there's mantras for different things. Ajikal Tanu Sikhana Banale different different potya. Kiapani wife no Yabani Vaskarna Iwala Shabat Pado. So I'd imagine Sundi Tevala Shabat Pado. Seriously, Horea, this is a social reality. So mantra actually is in Indic systems something you repeat for a particular end. That's the purpose of mantra. That you want this particular end, so if you keep repeating it, it will happen. Now look at Guru's radical approach. He says, if you repeat this, you will become like that. The end is to become like Vaheguru. He said, this is your mantra. This is our mantra. We're going to say Ko Ankar. We're going to say Sat Naam. We're going to say Karta Puruk. And until Guru Prasad. This is, he says, the way you will know that you feel the grace is when you become like Vaheguru. This is our mantra. Our end goal is Harjan Asa Jahiye, Jasa Harhi Hoye. The devotee of Vaheguru needs to be just like Vaheguru. This is the only mantra for us. According, and this is the often repeated one. There is no, is there any Sikh? Doesn't, we have so many disagreements, but I don't think there's any Sikh who disagrees with this is Mool Mantar, right? So Mool Mantar means the radical mantar. Radical, the root oriented, the most basic one. Keep repeating it until you become like Vaheguru. And this is why you have to understand what this is, because it's a behavior change. For us, God is not a person who a man, old man sitting upstairs trying to decide what to do with you and me. That's how most religions have it, not in ours. In ours, it's a behavior. They're all qualities. Ikkovankar, this is why I think Ikkarabhaga, there is one God, is not as good of a way to look at it. What does Ikk mean? One. Oneness, the one who takes you, and I'm a Star Wars fan, so I say it's a force. You can't see it, but it operates within you. So if you're not becoming one, what goes, if tomorrow you found out there were three gods, let's say Guru Nanak said there were three gods, will it change your life? Will it change your life? I don't think it will change most of our life because we haven't thought about what does it mean. It's just a slogan, a rhetoric. Ikko Ankar is when you really become the one. You're working towards becoming the You don't see the other. Dujja pao jindu gurwani jgya. You don't see anything else other. Na ko bari na hai vigana ta samaj aoga. Really Ikko Ankar and Guru Nanak sahab keeps repeating this everywhere. That it is a, even asa ki war. You know war literally means strike. Where two sides fight. Sheikh Ibrahim said is it possible to have a war with one side? He said let me show you. Asa ki war only talks about oneness. There are no two sides. This is another way to look at these things. Like he's really doing, no, there is a way to become one. There is no other. There is no Dujja Pao. Dujja Pao is the other condition, what the European scholars call it. Anyway, coming back to it, this is one way to look at it. Mool Mantar is an idea. It's a behavior change thing. If, it, if I say Nir Pao and I'm not becoming fearless, there is no behavior change. And if I say Nir Vair, and I still feel somebody is my enemy, they can think that I am their enemy. I can't think that they are my enemy. If you feel some, you have enemies, you, have, you don't know what Nirvair is. Some Kurta Puruk is a creative personality. Why am I not creative in my approaches? Why does confrontation has to be the every answer? And look at Gurus. creative approaches. 
ਲਾਈਕ ਹਿੰਦੂ ਸਮਾਜ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਸੀ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਨਾਟ ਅਲਾਊਡ ਟੂ ਸਿੰਗ ਕਲਾਸਿਕਲ 뮤직 ਕੀ ਸਰ ਆਪਾਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਬੈਠ ਕੇ ਪੜਾਂਗੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਹੀ ਛੱਡਤਾ ਅੱਜ ਫਿਰ ਦ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਇਜ਼ ਦੀਸ ਆਰ ਨਾਟ ਐਬਸਟਰੈਕਟ ਆਈਡੀਆਸ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਲੁੱਕ ਐਟ ਆਲ ਆਫ ਥੈਮ ਐਵਰੀਥਿੰਗ ਵੀ ਸੇ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਦ ਵੇ ਵੀ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟ ਗੁਰਬਾਣੀ ਨੀਡਸ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਬਿਯੋਂਡ ਸਪੇਸ ਐਂਡ ਟਾਈਮ why do we make the message to be punjabi centric indian centric london centric wherever else you like live we say it's universal well you better interpret it universally what the way you present gurbani it should be equally applicable to eskimos as it is to uh you know uh, some tribe in uh, africa but we are not able to do that but we create a slogan we are international and universal <coughs> well we will be universal when you actually present the message is equally valid 200 years ago as it is equally valid now and it will be equally valid in 100 years to come that requires us to really come up with what the message is <coughs> but we keep borrowing from other religions the phrases and we keep applying them without understanding of phrases ki ne and those phrases have no value for us they don't change us because we are not thinking about them this is the most radical declaration in guru granth sahib it starts with this it repeats it everywhere it actually is saying ਯੂ ਨਾ ਪਾਜ ਕਰਕੇ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਕਿ ਜਦ ਗੁਰੂ ਦੀ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਹੋ ਆਪਾਂ ਕਰ ਲਾਂਗੇ ਹਵ ਯੂ ਹਰਡ ਥਿਸ ਵੀ ਸਟਿਲ ਬਲੇਮ ਦਾ ਗੁਰੂ ਇਫ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਇਜ਼ ਨਾਟ ਗੈਟਿੰਗ ਡਨ ਇਟਸ ਕਾਲਡ ਐਸਕੇਪਿਜ਼ਮ ਆਈ ਹੈਵਨਟ ਫਾਉਂਡ ਐਨੀ ਵੇਅਰ ਇਨ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਵੇਅਰ ਗੁਰੂ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਡਿਸਕ੍ਰਿਮਿਨੇਟਰੀ ਏਜੈਂਟ ਬਟ ਵੀ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟ ਗੁਰੂ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਸੱਚ ਕਿ ਮੇਰੇ ਤੇ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਵੈਲ ਵਾਟ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਸੇਇੰਗ ਇਜ਼ ਯੂ ਵਿਲ ਫੀਲ ਦ ਗ੍ਰੇਸ ਵੈਨ ਯੂ ਚੇਂਜ ਯੂਰ ਬਿਹੇਵੀਅਰ ਡੋਨਟ ਸੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਇਜ਼ ਨਾਟ ਗ੍ਰੇਸਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਗੁਰੂ ਹੈਜ਼ ਗਿਵਨ ਦ ਮੈਸੇਜ ਟੂ ਐਵਰੀਵਨ guru is not a discriminating agent it's up to you whether you want to apply the message jaho upadesh varna nu upadesh sanja kini thama te aaya right so the grace for us is not that somebody is going to come and hallelujah karke tuhanu kuch laya ho tade sir de vich karan lagge ne vese kai apne bande vi grace according to the most radical idea in gurbani which starts from this is when your behavior becomes this when you become this when you become like waheguru when you become the one that's the grace but don't say ki guru mere te bhali nahi kar rahe it's like that old sakhi where somebody sitting in their house with their window closed and keep saying sunlight is not entering well grace is like a sunlight that's how pai veer singh presented he says you got to open your window to let it come in and windows are mental par hum ke padde satgur khol le the mind is closed and the guru's job is to open up these walls okay So I'm almost done after this we'll take you and a so the ideas from all this which come is that really this is adapted from Kapoor Singh he basically says we are supposed to be plural free open and progressive society 100 years ago it was progressive to say women have a right to vote six were the first one in electoral system even to do this as the pc when it was founded in 1920 <coughs> they allowed a right for women to vote 100 years ago 90 years ago roughly right and in america they weren't given the right until uh, women suffrage amendment there 500 years ago it was radical to say women are equal if today we are still saying women are equal that's not progressive that's regressive today we should be giving them and putting them in charge of our leadership roles like guru amar das pasha did during the manji system but today we are discussing is she allowed to do kirtan darbar sir that's regression not progression progression they hua ki jinne bhi duniya de movements chal rahe ne utthe leadership sikhan di khadi hove je because that's what we used to do you look at in india the biggest construction business which was a very risky business 100 years ago were six force people to venture out into military and army is very risky were six and there are enough studies out there which say risk and faith are directly proportional so maybe it's indicative of our faith now we just like settled jobs statistical jobs doctor banao engineer banao lawyer banao relatively safe jobs relatively speaking how about musicians why are our kids not the greatest musicians or great sports men or women we not pushing them ek vele addi team india di hockey team sikh hunde si and by the way last year is the first time after 26 years that six uh, players in indian hockey team are six again you have to see how that happened again in fact the captain nobody talks about him anymore everyone talks about harpajan singh the pajji right but nobody's talking about the captain of the indian hockey team he's uh, he's amrit tari sikh he plays with kulli dadi 
because it doesn't fit the image. So nobody talks about him, Rajpal. People are trying to do things, but we are not highlighting them. I'm, I'm gonna come back to this, that we are supposed to be plural, open, free, progressive society. Because we don't really apply Gurmats is my submission, we are not progressive anymore. We are actually discussing things which were resolved for us 500 years ago. Or if SGBC today, look what it does. 90 years ago, it was a very progressive organization. Today, it's probably one of the most corrupt organizations. Just like our Gurdwara systems, right? Okay, and you, sorry. I'm gonna just talk about this bullet. We, people who understand and say they follow Gurmat, they're always supposed to be ready to fight evil. And evil for us is not a person. So shatani is a behavior for us. We don't have a Satan. We don't have an evil person. Evil for us is perversion of mind. Over and over in Gurbani it says it's the mind which makes you do bad stuff. So make sure you work on your mind. Bring in the right thoughts. So we should always be ready to fight perversion in this world. Perversion generally gets collided or collected rather into religious and political leaderships. Most biggest perverts will show up there. Yep, it happened in Gurunak's period, it happens today too. <laughs> Most of the Babas running around are convicted of rapes. Yeah, some of them can't even enter Los Angeles city. But they have big systems right here in this city. Yeah, it's an information age, you can Google all that. In Guru Nanak's period, same thing was happening. It happened 100 years ago. The Mahantu Road, Nankana Sahib was uh, raping women in the complex of Nankana Sahib. So this perversion primarily will show up in political and religious leadership. We were prepared, people who knew Gurmat, <coughs> their job is to fight that perversion. Don't worry about Tawadha Nevar, Keda Paat Kar Reha, Te Meet Khanda Ki Nahi. Oh, Lai Nisandu Gade Sikhai Si. I don't find that history which Kete Lade On Sikh. This is what we are doing. So, we have to do the highest level of perversion. We have to do the dialogue. We have to do the dialogue. But at the end of the day, if nothing is working, it's okay to meet them in the battlefield also. But that was our fight. People who understand Gurmat bring Gurmat into their life, they are fighting those battles. Otherwise, there are small skirmishes. That's Manmat, perhaps. Okay, I'm done. I'm going to uh, ask somebody. I'm going to ask you guys this question. When you look at these two pictures, what comes to your mind? What is their relationship? Anji, speak up a bit. Predator. Predator and? Predator and prey, okay. Anyone else? Food. What's their relationship? Anyone else? It's just two pictures. Like we see the question here and over there. Koi tagdi philosophy nahi hai this. Surrender. Anji? Mouth is surrender. Surrender to a more powerful. What else? Protector. Protector. What else? Innocence and evil. Innocence and evil. Survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest. Let's keep going because this is where I, I want to really think about this stuff here. Anji. Good, good. What else? Neighbors. Zoo neighbors. Good, good. What else? One is free. One is free. One is free. One is Under threat and free. Okay. Now, this is very interesting for me because I like this exercise from two angles. First, it tells me, see how we all have different lenses in life? And I can't say any of those lenses is wrong because that's what you know. Because our experience makes us who we are. And whatever we are, we look at things from that angle. None of this experience is wrong. But here is what Gurbani says. How do you make your eyes to see what really needs to be seen? How do you make a netro mereo harbe nagar na dekho koi? How do we change the perceptions, our lenses, such that we are able to see what Gurbani is asking us to see? So just think about that question, and I'm going to end with a quote from Puran Singh. 
कैन आई गेट समबडी टू रीड दिस अलाउड अलाउड समबडी हां जी आवर सिट हिस्ट्री इज ऑफ द सोल 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 हां है ऑल इट्स इवेंट्स आर ऑफ द सोल ऑल ट्रूथ फॉर अस इज पर्सनल वी हैव नॉट टू प्रूव इट वी हैव टू स्टैंड विटनेस टू इट इन आवर सोल सो थैंक यू लेट्स स्टॉप हियर पहली गल इथे आ रही है सिक्स आर ट्राइंग टू प्रूव वे टू मच टू द वर्ल्ड जोड़ा बंद प्रूफ कर लग्या हों अकॉर्डिंग टू प्रोफेसर पूरन सिंह एटलीस्ट वो कॉम्पलैक्सिस खड़ा रहो की आर हेयर टू स्टैंड विटनेस टू हू वी आर बेसिकली की है नो हो यू आर यू डोंट हैव टू प्रूव एनी थिंग दैट इफ यू डोंट नो हो यू आर यू विल कीप प्रूविंग कैन आई गेट सैकेंड वॉलंटीयर हाँ जी थैंक यू सो यू सी सिक्खी भी तो ये सिखाया जा रहा एक्चुअली आर वी क्रिएटिंग एन एनवायरमेंट वेयर द वर्ल्डली लैवल तो जो द टू वर्ल्डली लैवल्स डायबोलिकली अपोजिंग थिंग्स कैन कम एंड सेट टूगैदर दिस इज द एनवायरमेंट वी आर सपोज टू क्रिएट सिख सभा दीख्या का भाव गुरबाणी कहती है Do, are we working? I mean, we have, we have an option. What kind of environment do you want to create? And Professor Puran is saying the environment we are supposed to be creating is it doesn't matter who is coming, but they're able to sit together. And if you want to do something, he says our work is sweeten you, and your sweetness sweetens all around. एक मेरा दोस्त है क्या Professor वो कहना आजकल ऐसी प्रचार पता की कर दिया एक flower लग गया या फूल उन्हें तोड़ दिया जोड़ा उन्होंने नहीं सुना चाहता वो नक् के अगे रखते हैं तो कहने सुन कि वीया क्या फुल की बेद भी हो रही है वी वर टोल टू एक्चुअली बिकम द फ्लावर विच हैज दिस फ्रेगरेंस तो जो उतो निकले जो उन्होंने सुन के चंगा लगे वो पुछ लो तो पाइए की है बट टूडे वी आर जस्ट मैसिंग ऑल द फ्लावर अप टू बिकॉज वी आर इन टू कन्वर्जन अगेन दिस इज सेंग वी वर ऑल अबाउट एट योर साइड द लैम एंड द टाइगर मस्ट ड्रिंक एट द सेम फूल we are facilitating the weak and the strong to figure out how to come together so this is now you can look at this is the kind of battles guru spot this is what he did with baba deep singh who is a fighting machine but he does literary work bachitra singh is a frail man he makes him fight right he is working to bring what we today call uh, a more full personality the briggs myer test kind of psychological test how do you become a complete personality so the idea today was so far that uh, i'll leave this slide this more information about sikri that if you really are interested in gurmat you really at minimum level have to figure out and connect with what's written in guru granth sahib at minimum everything else is open read as much as you want more than that at minimum you have to understand guru's history and that history which has the capacity to transform us and then you have to make gurbani and history relevant today otherwise it's just good to know type information it's not going to help you change the behavior this is where i'm going to end with an analogy and we'll have about 15 minutes for q and a the analogy in sikhi is and i know the two guys from five rivers are sitting here so you might like the analogy we are sikhi was supposed to be like we are supposed to become like rivers in guru granth sahib and maaj ki var i mentioned earlier it says guru samund nadi sab sikhi guru is like the ocean and the six need to become like the rivers so let's understand what rivers are river is the qualification of the river is it has to continuously flow you don't call a water to be river if it's stale that's called pond and sometimes they become very dirty and they stink also we are supposed to be like rivers continuously flowing doesn't matter what is happening doesn't matter what the weather outside is and the mental weather is continuously flowing and wherever the river starts if you have seen the initial initial points of rivers with the genesis of a river it is very shallow when the water comes out it hits the rocks and makes lot of noise so you will see jade nave nave sikh bande ne bahut roda paunde ne 
That's a natural process. But they have to remain a river. And the qualification is they have to continue flowing. And when the river continuously flows, the more it has to drown you, but it is very quiet. They don't make noise. They're, doing, they're creating the potentials to do things. So we're supposed to be like rivers. And when in the river, and you know, we will see all sorts of negativity around. If, if there's a shit floating in the river, do we look at it? We say, no, look at how great this river is, how big it is. Kidney Vishala, right? E Gurwani Gari, Je Baron Polchuk Bolde, Peak Hare Harpane. The idea is to become grand. So negativity will get subdued and positivity will come out. Your potentialities will come out. But you have to be dynamic, you have to continuously flow, which means you have to continuously grow yourself. This is the idea in Sikhi. Become like a river. This is why Punjab Dev Sikhi Aya kuch meaning aya da. Punjab, five river di tha hai giyo. Kyon Guru Govind Pasha vi patne to othe aare nanat pursa vasaon. What I am learning these days is that a lot of us are sometimes intellectually understanding Sikhi, but we are not emotionally connecting to Sikhi. And part of that is we must know, don't just go to Darbar Sahib when you go to Punjab. Please go to Fatehgarh Sahib. Go to Guru Ka Lahore. Go look at where Kachi Kandh Hai Giyya, Batalaj. Go look at where Chamkaur is. Because those are the historically significant places for us. We become something else when we go there. This is why the governments of the time stopped us from going to Darbar Sahib complex. It happened 27 years ago. It happened 100 years ago. It happened 200 years ago. It happened 400 years ago. We were not, because the governments of the time now, that when we assemble in our historical places, it's not a pilgrimage for us. But when we go to the historical places, we emotionally connect with our history. And if you have the wisdom, the intellect from Gurwani, and the emotional connection from history, you will know what to do. Everything in life is, people ask me, how do, think, how do, uh, how do you do things? I said, well, my understanding is, when passion meets skills, things happen. If you just have passion, no skills, things won't happen. If you just have skills, no passion, things won't happen. When passion meets skill, I call that luck. To me, luck is when passion meets skill. So if you're already passionate about something, develop understanding from Gurwani, connect emotionally with Sikhi. Go visit historical places. You will see why did Guru Govind Pasha chose these really what we'll call nice spots to do poetic works. We have screwed up those poetic elements also. We only remember the Talwar part. But we forgot there were 52 guys doing poetry all the time. So we were different kind of warriors, that's why. You know, we know more about samurais now than we know less about the Khalsa. We have made Khalsa to be this androcentric image. It's not that. Khalsa was some very different kind of a personality, which was involved in all sorts of dimensions of life. So I'm going to leave with that. Become like a river. Don't agree with anything I've told you today. Because if you do, then you are my slave. And the Gurbani's message is, don't be anyone's slave. Most people are trying to make us slaves. Mental slaves, spiritual slaves, emotional slaves. Corporate world is making us economically slave. Political world is not aware You got to do your own journey. You have to become your own river. It's between you and your guru. And no third person has. It's none of their business. It really is that simple. It's between you and your guru. And those who have strong relationship with the guru, actually they used to be the Panth. Those who have strong relationship with the Guru, those who are carrying Gurmat in their mind, in their actions, in their behavior, they are the Panthak ones. They work together to get things done. Others, who knows what's, what they're doing? You know what they're doing. So, Gurmat is something mental, Gurmat is something emotional, Gurmat is something political. Gurmat is something social. Every denomination we have created to study life, Gurmat is all of that. It's a wisdom for life. I'll leave it at that and I'm open for any questions or answers.